Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know if you are having any issues. Okay, Colleen said hello. Good. Awesome. Well, welcome to the Upper Speeds live class. We're so excited to have you if you are here for uh, the week. And welcome to our trial week. This class focuses on the uh, speeds 180, 200, 225. And typically how we run these classes is we, we start with drills and then we go to uh, jury charge, literary, and then Q&A. So um, most of you are probably really familiar with the light board. And if you're not, I'll just give a little rundown right before we start that. So um, that's behind me here. So we'll go through that when we get closer to it. And um, if you guys have any questions, um, I always like to unmute everyone after class so I can answer any questions that you may have. And otherwise, you can type a little message there. And I try to look over every once in a while to make sure I don't have any message, um, a new message from someone. So my name is Jill Brummond, and I teach all of the live classes for Platinum Steno. So it's so exciting to have you here. And um, typically, I will mute everybody. And that way, if somebody wants to come in in the middle of class, it doesn't interrupt anyone. But I always unmute everyone after class. So um, we'll get started. Okay, I'll go ahead and mute everyone. All right. And I always like to start with common words to get our fingers going. And I actually have um, a drill here. It's antonyms, so it's perfect for words. All right. So we'll get started with those. Here we go. Ready? Employer, employee, empty, full, encourage, discourage, end, beginning, entrance, exit, excited, calm, expand, con contract, expensive, inexpensive, export, import, exterior, interior, external, internal, fail, succeed, false, true, famous, unknown, fast, slow, feeble, sturdy, few, many, find, loose, fat, thin, first, last, fold, unfold, foolish, wise, four legs, hind legs, forget, remember, fortunate, unfortunate, found, lost, frank, secretive, freedom, captivity, frequent, seldom, fresh, stale, friend, enemy, full, empty, gather, distribute, generous, mean, gentle, rough, giant, dwarf, glad, sorry, gloomy, cheerful, Granted, refused, great, minute, guardian, ward, quest, or excuse me, guest, host, guilty, innocent, happy, sad, hard, soft, harmful, harmless, hate, love, healthy, ill, heavy, light, height, depth, here, there, hero, coward, hill, valley, hinder, aid. Honest, dishonest, horizontal, vertical, humble, proud, hunger, thirst, imitation, genuine, immense, tiny, imprison, fee, or excuse me, free, include, exclude, increase, decrease, inferior, superior, inhabited, uninhabited, inhale, exhale, inside, outside, intelligent, stupid, intentional, accidental, interesting, dull, interior, exterior, internal, external, join, separate, junior, senior, justice, injustice, king, subject, knowledge, ignorance, land, sea, landlord, tenant, large, small, last, first, laugh, cry, lawful, unlawful, lawyer, citizen, lazy, energetic, leader, follower, lecturer, student, left, right, lender, borrower, lengthen, shorten, less, more, light, heavy, like, unlike, 
likely, unlikely, little, much, lofty, lowly, long, short, loose, lose, win, loud, soft, low, high, loyal, disloyal. All right. When I said uh, great, I meant to say minute. I think I said minute, but it was at such a high speed. I just continue to go on. All right. So here are some common phrases that we often hear. You won't be able to phrase all of these, but I always encourage you to phrase it as much as possible. Okay, here we go. Do you ever, do you feel, do you have, do you recollect, do you remember, do you think, do you understand, do you want, does he believe, does he feel, does he have, does he recall, does he recollect, does he remember, does he understand, does he want, billion dollar, billion dollars, hundred dollar, hundred dollars, million dollar, million dollars, thousand dollar, thousand dollars, beyond a reasonable doubt, beyond all reasonable doubt, during the, in effect, into effect, do you ever, have you ever, I don't ever, she ever, they ever, whether he ever, whether I ever, preponderance of the evidence, received in evidence, cross-examination, direct examination, recross examination, redirect examination, defendant's exhibit, government's exhibit, plaintiff's exhibit, respondent's exhibit, state's exhibit, any fact, as a matter of fact, in fact. And um, I, you guys probably already know these briefs, but just in case, cross examination, I write as crocs, direct examination, directs, defendant's exhibit, I do DEX, government's exhibit, GOX, Plaintiff's Exhibit, P-L-E-X, and Respondent's Exhibit, I do R-E-X. You may have other ways that you like to write them, but just um, some information if you're looking for one of those briefs. All right, my next drill is going to focus on from the, in the, on the. Here we go. Leave from the station, bird in the cage, man on the street, house on the corner, trip in the car, cop from the city, Page from the book, girl in the picture, print on the page, letter from the doctor, gun on the table, hole in the pavement, article from the paper, defendant in the case, house on the block, car from the garage, body in the river, rate on the loan, column on the page, walk in the park, call from the office, teller from the bank, vehicle in the photograph, Mark on the wall, attorney on the case, shot in the dark, money from the government, passenger in the car, files on the desk, secretary from the agency, memo from the boss, patient in the hospital, truck on the freeway, sign on the post, food in the restaurant, fish from the sea, note from the teacher, notes on the trial, fly in the ointment, reporter from the committee, funds in the account, paint on the house, seat on the airplane, notice from the defense, clause in the contract. All right. My next drill is going to focus on words that either start with in or un. Okay, here we go, ready? Incognito, uninterested, incomplete, unrecognized, incomparable, unable, inconsistent, uncooperative, incontinent, unavailable, inconvenient, uninhibited, inappropriate, undetermined, inanimate, unlatch, inane, unmanned, inability, unscramble, inadvertent, unsaturated, inundated, unyielding, inclusive, unwilling, inspired, undying, inadequate, unsophisticated, inapplicable, unthreaded, inalienable, unsung, inexplainable, unexplained, unsold, incapacity, unwrapped, unwarranted, inception, unspeakable, indecisive, unthinkable, insequential, 
unveiled, inclusion, unwholesome. All right, and there's more, but I'm going to stop there with that. We'll finish that one up on Friday. All right, I've got some sentences with um, words that focus on initial consonants that start with GL, GL. Here we go, ready? The miser gloated over his glittering, gleaming gold. The glee club glanced at the gladiator. The glider glided off the glowing glacier. The glue and the glitter stuck to the glove. My glum turned to glee when she got her glad rags. A glimpse of the glamorous girl drew glances. The glacial glacier gladdened the gleaner. Gladiators gladly glance at gliders. I would gladly be glamorous. Don't glance through your glasses at the glitter. The glare of the glaring glassware glitters. That gleam is glued to the gloomy. She gloated over her granular globes. Glucose is glowingly described as glorious. The glutton's gleam was glistening. Glow, little glowworm, glean and glisten. Glaucoma glazes any glamour you might glean. All the glitter doesn't glow. They were gloating in the gloaming. All the glory gleaned from the glossy glowered. The globe glittered from the glazed coating. The globe trotters were in their glory as they danced around. Having granular fever makes your eyes glassy and glossy. The gluten flour has to look like glue to make gluten bread. Being a glittering glamorous model makes me glad. I almost came unglued when I glanced up and saw the glucose. The day was gloomy and he was glutton for punishment. The gleeful children glanced through the glass. We glided across the glittering snow gleefully. We were glaring at the glowing, glittering blazes. She glanced at the glittering, glossy diamond. The glee club gladly sang songs of glory. As I danced around, I saw gleaming glaciers. Gloria glides gracefully across glittering ice. He would gladly stare at the glamorous model with glasses. Glittering jewelry is often made of glass and glue. Glenn and Gloria glanced at gliders and gladiators. That glamorous girl had a glassy stare. Gla glow worms glean and glisten when it's gloomy. All right. I've got some names and addresses for you. All right, here we go, ready? Mr. Michael S. Baker, B-A-K-E. E R 6060 Thompson Clark Road, Bristolville, Ohio 44502. Mr. Chris L. Welch, W E L C H 2862 West 57th Place, Meredith, Indiana 46410. Dr. Lee A. Schrader, S C H R A D E R, Director of Counseling, Sunny College of Technical Business School. 810 Court Street, Utica, New York, 13502. Ms. Karen Ann Dodd, D-O-D-D, -D, Shape American High School, New York, New York, 09088. Ms. Gail C. Bethune, B-E-T-H-U-N-E, -E, Canton Independent School District, 225 West Elm Street, Canton, Texas, 75103. Mr. Kerry G. Yates, Y-A-T-E-S, 10873 Franks Road, Chagrin Falls, Ohio, 44022. Monica Mary DeQuardo, Frank Franklin Christian Charity, 22422 South Moreland Road, New Berlin, Wisconsin, 53151. Ms. Barbara H. Tuttle, R.N., T-U-T-T-L-E, Quagberg Regional Hospital, River Street, Warren, Massachusetts, 01083. Ms. Kirsten Y. Yader, Y-A-I-D-E-R, 112 Boulder Street, Nevada City, California, 95959. 
All right. I have a drill here on ordinals. Okay, so this focuses on ordinals. Here we go, ready? On the third day of the fifth month, there was only one fourth of the 22nd Battalion on duty. Our 10th and 20th reunions were held on the 31st day of the second month. The sixth horse in the seventh race came in eighth in a field of nine. One sixteenth of the 23rd Order of Elks was present on the 11th. It was the first day of the 12th month that they had their 43rd anniversary. The 14th person in the 21st row won the third prize. The 50th person was selected as the 33rd recipient for the second time. Only two thirds of the 20 applicants finished in the fifth round. She was the 19th, he was the 53rd, they were the 41st in line. The birthdays of the fourth month were on the 13th, the 23rd, and the 1st. I only saw one eighth of the 63rd annual parade held on the 16th. Their first choice proved to be 87th in a group of second timers. We won on the 5th, the 61st, and the 18th along with the 24th try. Just nine sixteenths of the 25 placed in the top one third. The 25th meeting was held on the 21st of the second month. He succeeded on the 80th take on the first day of the 35th week. The 23rd is on the 5th by the 1st next to the 93rd near the 18th by the 35th on the 9th with the 43rd in the 2nd at the 13th in the 53rd for the 21st by the 90th to the 72nd. It was on the ninth hole in the third round of the second year after the 11th day in the eighth month by the 43rd person at the 17th event. All right, moving into some Tangle Tamers. Sometimes these can be a little tricky just because we don't usually have um, briefs for them, but they're, it's great practice. Here we go, ready? Sorted affairs, speech impediment, potential employers, construction landscaping, overwhelmingly positive, startling developments, satisfaction guaranteed, velveteen rabbit, fluorescent orange, biological background, committee, president, wall coverings and upholstery, medically induced, security professions, reportedly replied, definitely contemporary, spacious grandeur, congenial benefactor, particularly precise, beach umbrella, undocumented workers, mentally retarded, devastating announcement, bureaucratically run, refuse receptacle, Divisional distributor, continuing education, primary argument, emotionally distressing, service representatives, supermarket parking, brilliant portrayal, easygoing character, gracious architecture, equestrian community, affiliated technology. All right. We're almost through with our drills. How are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing good. I have an automobile description with license numbers, okay? And uh, some might have the VIN number, but most of these are license numbers. And for license number, I don't know if you guys use the brief, but I use initial L, final N for license number. But I think some people have said in the past that they use L-I-N, but then that conflicts with LIN, so... It's up to you what you wanna do there, okay? All right, here we go, ready? 2011 GMC Sierra Black, license number IF13761. 2009 Red GMC Yukon Denali, license number F123717. 2000 Silver Pontiac Sunfire, license number RMTC431. 2004 Blue Pontiac Grand Am, license number 2TMC441. 
1997 Hunter Green GMC Yukon, license number 7F43510. 2009 White Jeep Wrangler, license number 4BTU473. 2008 Gray Toyota 4Runner, license number LF1374J. 1977 Dark Blue Dodge, license number CF1201B. 1987 Volkswagen Vanagon, license number KMJ A761. 1992 Chevrolet Impala, license number 3NT0782. 2014 Mitsubishi Eclipse, license number 4CT M431. 2012 Nissan Sentra, license number 20T. D217 and 2016 Green Toyota Celica license number 3YMT405. All right. I have some land description that I'm going to give you. Okay. And of course, this focuses on numbers and it's always a little tricky because land description doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it just teaches you to write what you hear. All right, here we go, ready? Consisting of a portion of section 23 and 26, both said sections being in Township 13 South, range 19 East, and the base and meridian of beginning Northwest corner of the Southwest quarter of the Southeast quarter of section 23, Township 13 South, range 19 East. Mount Base and Meridian as said section is known and shown on the United States Government Township Platts, being also a point on the existing city limits of the city of Fresno, thence easterly along the north line of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of said section, being also along the existing city limits of said city to a point 137.49 feet west of the northeast corner of the west half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of said section, thence south southerly along a line parallel with and 133.89 feet west of the east line of the west half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of said section, being also along the existing city limits of said city, a distance of 158.41 feet thence easterly along a line parallel with and 158.32 feet south of the north line of the west half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of said section being also along the existing city limits of said city, a distance of 137.49 feet to the intersection with the east line of the west half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of said section, thence southerly along the east line of the west half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of said section. All right, and there's more, but we're going to stop there. I'll finish the rest on Friday, Friday morning's class. All right, moving into literary and jury charge. I have some terminology of light. Okay. Here we go, ready? Terminology of light. One, light is a form of radiant energy that enables us to see. Two, radiant energy refers to light, heat, radio, and x-rays traveling through space at about 186,000 miles per second. Three, a ray is a single line of light. Four, a beam of light is several rays of light. Five, luminous means giving out light of its own. Six, illumination is the amount of light per unit of area. Seven, infrared rays are the invisible rays just beyond the visible red of the spectrum. Eight, ultraviolet rays are the invisible rays of the sun that cause sunburn. They are wavelengths just beyond the visible violet of the spectrum. Nine, incandescence is a glowing light which comes from intense heat. 10, fluorescent light is the glow produced by cer certain minerals after they have been exposed to ultraviolet or other forms of radiant energy. 
11, polarized light is light that is regulated or put into channels so that it is different from one another or one direction to another. 12, the spectrum is a band of colors produced by passing light through a prism. 13, a solar spectrum is a band of seven colors formed by a beam of sunlight striking a prism. 14, a rainbow is an arc of the seven spectrum colors, sometimes seen in a rain cloud or in mist or spray, resulting from the reflection and refraction of light by drops of water. All right, I've got a paragraph here. Um, this is on the legal term conviction. Um, well, actually there's several legal terms here, but it's one paragraph long. So I'm going to read this one time at 180, again at 200, again at 225. Okay. All right, here we go. It's on legal terms. Get my watch going here. All right. A conviction is a judgment finding the accused guilty. To cooperate is to strengthen another person's statement. A count is an individual charge or a cause of action. A court reporter records verbatim testimony at a trial or deposition. Credibility refers to reliability. Cross-examination is questioning of a witness by the opposing attorney. A defense attorney is a lawyer who represents the accused or the defendant. Deliberations are discussions in order to arrive at a decision. A deponent is an individual who gives testimony under oath. Okay, so again, at 200. A conviction is a judgment finding the accused guilty. To cooperate is to strengthen another person's statement. A count is an individual charge or a cause of action. A court reporter records verbatim testimony at a trial or deposition. Credibility refers to reliability. Cross-examination is questioning of a witness by the opposing attorney. A defense attorney is a lawyer who represents the accused or the defendant. Deliberations are discussions in order to arrive at a decision. A deponent is an individual who gives testimony under oath. Okay, last time at 225. A conviction is a judgment finding the accused guilty. To cooperate is to strengthen another person's statement. A count is an individual charge or a cause of action. A count is an individual charge or cause of action. A court reporter records verbatim testimony at a trial or deposition. Credibility refers to reliability. Cross-examination is questioning of a witness by the opposing attorney. The defense attorney is a lawyer who represents the accused or the defendant. Deliberations are discussions in order to arrive at a decision. A deponent is an individual who gives testimony under oath. I read one of those sentences twice, so sorry about that. All right. Now, I've got a stipulation to relieve the reporter of her duties or his duties. Okay, I'm going to read this at 200. Okay, here we go. We will go ahead and relieve the reporter of her duties under the Code of Civil Procedure regarding custody and signature of the original deposition transcript. The original will be forwarded directly to Mr. Pallard. Mr. Pallard will maintain the original and make it available at all subsequent proceedings. Mr. Pallard will make the original deposition transcript available to Kyle via his guardian ad litem for review and signature under penalty of perjury via the guardian ad litem. Mr. Pallard will notify all other counsel of any changes, revisions, or corrections made by the guardian ad litem as she reads it to and or with Kyle within 60 days of Mr. Pallard's receipt of the original. Should the original become lost, misplaced, or otherwise unavailable, or should the guardian ad litem not read it, then a copy will be used as the original. And then guardian ad litem is just a person appointed in a lawsuit um, on behalf of a child who's not capable um, to represent themselves. That's, you're not sure what guardian ad litem is. All right. Now I've got some jury charge here. You're going to hear, um, let's see, circumstantial inference establishes conclusively evidence respected judicial notice um, declaration, judicially 
sole judges, distinction, direct and circumstantial evidence, degree of proof, um, I think I gave you inference, existence, deduction, logically. All right, that's about it. So I'm going to do this because it's only one page. It's actually two paragraphs long. I'm going to read this once at 180, again at 200, again at 225, okay, because we're doing okay on time. Here we go. Members of the jury, evidence may either be direct or circumstantial. It is direct evidence if it proves without an inference and which in itself, if true, conclusively establishes that fact. It is circumstantial evidence if it proves a fact from which an inference of the existence of another fact may be drawn. An inference is a deduction of fact that may logically and reasonably be drawn from another fact or group of facts established by the evidence. The law makes no distinction between direct and circumstantial evidence as to the degree of proof required. Each is accepted as a reasonable method of proof and each is respected for such convincing forces as it may carry. The court may take judicial notice of certain facts or events. When the court declares it will take judicial notice of some fact or event, you may accept the court's declaration as evidence and regard as proved the fact or event which has been judicially noticed but you are not required to do so since you are the sole judges of the facts. Okay, again at 200. Members of the jury, evidence may be either direct or circumstantial. It is direct evidence if it proves without an inference and which in itself, if true, conclusively establishes that fact. It is circumstantial evidence if it proves a fact from which an inference of the existence of another fact may be drawn. An inference is a deduction of fact that may logically and reasonably be drawn from another fact or group of facts established by the evidence. The law makes no distinction between direct and circumstantial evidence as to the degree of proof required. Each is accepted as a reasonable method of proof and each is respected for such convincing forces as it may carry. The court may take judicial notice of certain facts or events. When the court declares it will take judicial notice of some fact or event, you may accept the court's declaration as evidence and regard as proved the fact or event which has been judicially noticed, but you are not required to do so since you are the sole judges of the facts. All right, my last time will be at 2.25. Here we go. Members of the jury, evidence may be either direct or circumstantial. It is direct evidence if it proves without an inference and in which in itself, if true, conclusively establishes that fact. It is circumstantial evidence if it proves a fact from which an inference of the existence of another fact may be drawn. An inference is a deduction of fact that may logically and reasonably be drawn from another fact or group of facts established by the evidence. The law makes no distinction between direct and circumstantial evidence as to the degree of proof required. Each is accepted as a reasonable method of proof and each is respected for such convincing forces as it may carry. The court may take judicial notice of certain facts or events. When the court declares it will take judicial notice of some fact or event, you may accept the court's declaration as evidence and regard as proved the fact or event which has judicially been noticed, but you are not required to do so since you are the sole judges of the facts. All right. Moving into literary. Now, with the literary, I'm just going to start at 180 and work my way to 200. It's just one page. It's on hero pets. Okay. All right, here we go. So we'll start at 180 and work our way up to 200. Here we go. Since she was a little girl, Chloe Jean Wendell has had a special rapport with animals, but in the two years since her family brought Sunny Boy home to their farm in Vivian, Louisiana, the 16-year-old high school junior has bonded more closely with her quarter horse than anyone expected. Hit possibly as a colt years before, Sunny Boy was spooked by almost any human contact. No one could catch him, says Chloe Jean's dad, Mark, but my daughter had an immediate calming effect on him that allowed her to saddle him up for a ride. Sunny Boy and Chloe Jean quickly became inseparable. At the local Red Bud Festival Parade in March 2008, 
the whole Wendell family, Mark and wife Bobby Joe, Chloe Jean, and her younger sister Kristen, 15, decked themselves out in Western gear and trotted on their horses behind the Vivian Sheriff's contingent. Chloe Jean rode Sunny Boy. Kristen was on her Philly Angel. A few blocks into the parade, a 75-pound pit bull shot out of the crowd right at Angel and began to attack her. When Angel kicked back, Kristen jumped off to avoid being thrown. The snarling dog then turned on the girl. Chloe Jean dismounted to protect her sister. We watched in horror, recalls Mark. When Chloe Jean let go of the reins, Sunny Boy started off as if to run off. But as the pit bull whipped around to pounce on Chloe Jean, all 1,200 pounds of Sunny Boy stopped short and jumped between them. He astonished everyone by squaring off and kicking the dog hard in the face. I was shocked, said Chloe Jean. Usually he avoids other animals. The tenacious dog flipped around and began tearing gashes in the legs of Mark's horse. Animal control officials moved in and finally captured the dog. Chloe Jean's friends clustered around her saying, your horse saved you. Indeed, the behavior was highly unusual. I've been around horses all of my life and I have not seen one take on another animal like that, says Mark. That night, Chloe Jean visited Sunny Boy out in the pasture. I gave him treats and told him how thankful I was that he protected me. I think he already knew how I felt. All right. Moving into Q&A. So I'm just going to go over this just a little bit, give you a little, you know, a little quick tutorial on the um, Q&A. So most of you probably already know how to use a light board. Um, but just in case you don't, this is the plaintiff. We've got the court. We have the witness. And we have defense attorney. Okay? So that's, that is how we know who is speaking. Plaintiff, wit, uh, court, witness, and defense. So um, when the plaintiff is questioning, we call him Mr. Snoo. So it's going to be S-T-P-H-A-O, Snoo. That's how we identify that plaintiff is questioning. When the defense is questioning, we identify him as Mr. Ifpelt, I-F-P-L-T, okay? Um, when it's strict Q&A, back and forth, just Q&A, you don't have to continue to hit Snoo or Ifpelt. It's just the question bank, which is S-T-K-P-W-H-R. Now over here is the answer bank, Fr P B L G T S. So you just have your question bank, answer bank, okay? So if it's just Q&A with plaintiff, you, you simply only have to sign them in one time, and then after that, it's just QA, QA, and then if the other attorney jumps in, or maybe the court jumps in, then you want to re-identify the questioning attorney so you know who is questioning if you were to transcribe that, okay? All right, so I brought a fun little description of people drill. I thought that would be um, great practice, okay? Um, so this is kind of a crazy little drill, but it's all Q&A format. So plaintiff is questioning, and it's all about like, what do these suspects look like, okay? I'm going to read this um, at 80, okay? All right, here we go. I'm sorry, 180, not 80, 180. Here we go, ready? What did the first suspect look like? He was tall with flabby arms, unkempt blonde hair, about five foot 11 in his early 40s and was the nasty mean one. What did the second suspect look like? He was a middle-aged man that was overweight, dark complexion with brown eyes and a green dragon tattoo on his upper arm and was the nervous, quiet one. He had a receding hairline that looked like he was going bald in the back and going gray. What did the third suspect look like? The female was 30-something, skinny with spotty skin, plain clothing. She had on a red shirt, black pants, and white shoes. She was the loud, chatty one in the bunch. She had black, shoulder-length hair and was rather petite. What about the girl that was with her? The girl that was with her had long, wavy brown hair, pale skin, above average height, Clothing was untidy, wearing a stained pink and white shirt with light gray knee-length pants and silver sandals. She had a striped bow in her hair with gold hooped earrings. How about the person that they robbed? What did he look like? The male was clean shaven with short spiky red hair, freckles, a thick mustache, average height with fair skin. He had on a blue shirt with a bluish gray jacket over that. 
His shorts were checkered and wore white socks. He had a purple ball cap that said Lakers on it. He seemed to be a nice cooperative guy who was trying to do what he was told. What about the female he was with? She had more of a stocky build, dark coarse hair, short in height, yellow earrings, red bandana, good clear complexion with a raspy voice. She was wearing thick rimmed glasses and had on blue jeans with holes in the knees along with a white sweatshirt that had multicolored polka dots on it and orange checkered shoes. So I like that because I, I often hear students say that they really struggle with descriptions of people. So I went in and kind of made that one up myself. I try to make it as, you know, descriptive as possible. All right. So we're going to touch on to some regular Q&A. Um, I'm going to give you a word list. You're going to hear supposed, reputation, mentioned, culmination, San Fernando Middle School, uh, mother, father, informal foster parent, breach, particular, horses, Brian, walnut, um, storyteller, you're going to hear tell, I want to tell the story, T-E-L, and tale, give me a tale, meaning like a story that would be T long A-L with the flag, so that it doesn't conflict with tail on the cat or the dog, which is just T long A-L. All right, I'm going to read this once, it's only one page, read it once at 180, again at 200, and again at 225. I'm just dating this so I know that we've covered it. All right. This is going to be plaintiff. Here we go. You mean a nine-year-old boy? You say he's nine. He's 12. He's either 12 or 13 now. Do you know what school he is enrolled in? He isn't in school. What school is he supposed to be in? Well, he was supposed to be in San Fernando Middle School. I believe he was supposed to have been in there. How would he get there? How would he get there? It would be by bus. Is there a bus that comes up to your property where you live now? His mother lived all over the area. His mother used to live on Walnut. Then she moved in another place. I don't know. She doesn't say where she goes for some reason. You were just taking care of him? That's right. He needs someone to mother and father him. I see, you were sort of like an informal foster parent. Right, he loved horses. When the kid got out of hand, you know, they all go through that. Was there anything in particular that might have caused the breach between you and Brian? No, just a culmination of things. Yes, I just felt that he should go home, you know. You mentioned that he had a reputation for being a storyteller. Yes, he does tell tales. Okay, again at 200, here we go. You mean a nine-year-old boy? You say he's nine, he's 12, he's either 12 or 13 now. Do you know what school he was enrolled in? He isn't in school. What school is he supposed to be in? Well, he was supposed to be in San Fernando Middle School. I believe he was supposed to have been in there. How would he get there? How would he get there? It would be by bus. Is there a bus that comes up to your property where you live now? His mother lived all over the area. His mother used to live on Walnut. Then she moved in another place. I don't know. She doesn't say where she goes for some reason. You were just taking care of him? That's right. He needs someone to mother and father him. I see. You were sort of like an informal foster parent? Right. He loved horses. When the kid got out of hand, you know, they all go through that. Was there anything in particular that might have caused the breach between you and Brian? No, just a culmination of things. Yes, I just felt that he should go home, you know. You mentioned that he had a reputation for being a storyteller. Yes, he does tell tales. Okay, last time at 225. Here we go. You mean a nine-year-old boy? You say he's nine, he's 12. He's either 12 or 13 now. Do you know what school he is enrolled in? He isn't in school. What school is he supposed to be in? Well, he was supposed to be in San Fernando Middle School. I believe he was supposed to have been in there. How would he get there? 
how would he get there? It would be by bus. Is there a bus that comes up to your property where you live now? His mother lived all over the area. His mother used to live on Walnut. Then she moved in another place. I don't know. She doesn't say where she goes for some reason. You were just taking care of him? That's right. He needs someone to mother and father him. I see. You were sort of like an informal foster parent? Right. He loved horses. When the kid got out of hand, you know, they all go through that. Was there anything in particular that might have caused the breach between you and Brian? No, just a culmination of things. Yes, I just felt that he should go home, you know. You mentioned that he had a reputation for being a storyteller. Yes, he does tell tales. All right. Now, this next Q&A that I give you, I'm going to start at 180 and just work my way to 225, okay? You're going to hear hospital, H-O-P-T, approximately, absolutely. I write that as slut, S-L, long U-T, come back for L-A-E, slutely. Um, appearance, P-A-E-R-N-S. Um, you're going to hear neurosurgeon, neurologist, of course. I like to write that as final F-K. Autopsy, A-U-P. Diabetic. Um, there's two ways you can write that. You can either write that as D-long I-B-T or D-long I, come back for B-E-K, Diabetic. Um, I like to write it as D-long I-B-T. It saves a stroke. Diabetes, I write that as D-long E-T-S, DEETS, diabetes, DEETS. Um, but I've heard of other people writing it as D-long I-B, DIBE. So you have a a couple of options there. Nothing further, I write that as NERT, N-U-R-T. Okay, so it's gonna start with plaintiff, but defense is going to take over in a minute, okay? I'm gonna start at 180 and work my way to um, 225. Here we go, ready? What time did he first get there? He got there at approximately 2 a.m. and that is the time he gave her a shot and said that she had a slight stroke? Yes. And at what time did he come back, if you recall? Approximately 10 o'clock the next day. And then he came back the last time at approximately 7.30. That's when he recommended to put her in the hospital. That was the next evening? Yes, it was. And what was your wife's condition from the time the doctor first came up until he decided to put her in the hospital? She was absolutely lifeless. Do you mean there was no movement at all? No, nothing. No sound? No sound, nothing moved. And what was her appearance other than being motionless? Her appearance was good. Was she in this condition on the second and third visits of the doctor? Yes, she was. What did the doctor do or say at the time of the second visit? Well, his actual words, I don't know. The effect was that he didn't see why she didn't snap out of it and that she probably would by any minute but he'd wait a little while and come back later. Did you have to phone him each time or did he come back on his own? He came back on his own. What about the third visit? On the third visit, she was the same way and he said, well, I guess you'd better put her in the hospital. He went back to his office and made arrangements for me to take her to St. Mary's. St. Mary's Hospital? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Where did you say? St. Mary's. Thank you. Continue. Now, as I understand it, she passed away in the hospital. Yes, that is right. I have nothing further. Counsel, how long was it that she was at St. Mary's Hospital before she died? Well, it was less than 24 hours. I think she was admitted at approximately 10 p.m., and I think the death was somewhere around 9 p.m. The, the next evening. And as far as you know, did your wife ever come out of it in the sense of speaking or being active again? No. And was Dr. Drake, as far as you know, the only doctor who saw your wife throughout this time? Oh, no. He turned her over to another doctor at the hospital. Would that be Dr. Mack? Right. What did Dr. Mack or Dr. Drake do at the hospital? I don't know. They took her to the emergency ward and gave her a thorough examination and ran all kinds of tests and everything. They took her upstairs and they had a nurse with her the whole time she was there. Okay. Were you with her? I was at the hospital the whole time, but most of the time, they had me out in the hall. Was Dr. Mack, if you know, a neurosurgeon or a neurologist? I haven't the slightest idea. Or does he have a specialty? I don't know. At a time like that, I didn't ask too many questions. I can imagine how you felt. 
and was an autopsy performed? Yes. Now from the autopsy, of course, we want to know, we would like to know, we know that your wife had diabetes. Did you ever know that she had diabetes before her death? The only diabetic that I ever heard her talk about was her mother. Did anyone tell you even after her death that she had diabetes? Only what the doctor said at the hospital. After she came out of the emergency ward, he said it was diabetes. Yes, he did. Which doctor said that she had diabetes? Dr. Mack, he told me she had probably had it for quite some time and just never knew it or else she ignored the symptoms. Okay. Are we doing on time? Good, we're doing good on time. All right, so let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna do another, um, I'm gonna do some, well, I, okay, I'm gonna give you this Q&A. Um, it's kind of like a drill, but it's, it's with the light board, okay? It's a random Q&A, don't think, just right drill, okay? So it's all about don't think, just right. So most of the time when we're answering questions, um, or writing what the question is and the answer, we kind of have an idea of what the answer is going to be. But this is completely different because every question is going to be different from the, the previous one. So you have no idea what they're going to ask. Okay, it's, I really like it a lot. So um, I'm going to read this at 200. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? How do you spell dog? D-O-G. How long did you study last night for three hours? How long have you been playing the trumpet for four years? How many hours a day do you sleep? I sleep seven hours. How many hours a day do you watch TV? About two hours. How often do you play tennis? Almost every day. How often do you speak on the telephone? At least once a day. How often do you write an email? Two times a week. It seems to me that most restaurants are too expensive. I don't think so. My mother is a good cook. I agree with you. What are you doing? I'm eating. What are you doing after dinner? I'm going to read a book. What did you do yesterday? I swam. What did you eat last night? Spaghetti. What did you like to drink? Coffee. What does TV mean? Television. What is your busiest day of the week? Tuesday. What kind of novels do you like? I like spy novels. What kind of work do you do? I'm a piano teacher. What were you doing last night at seven? I was sleeping. What will you do this afternoon? I'll play soccer. What is your favorite sport? Swimming. What did you, or when did you go to the restaurant? Last night. When was the last time you took a picture? About four days ago. When was the last time you went shopping? Yesterday. When will you mail that letter? After school. Where can I buy beer? At a liquor store. Where do you do your homework? At home. Where do you usually eat lunch? In the cafeteria. Where is Mike? At school. How many times have you gone camping? Three times. When is your birthday? November 2nd. Where are you from? New York. How do you get to school? With my bike. So I'm sure that was challenging, but I, I, that's one of my favorite drills. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do some more four voice. This, uh, the, the plaintiff is going to question, but defense and the court comes in with those, okay? And I'm going to give you a short word list, all right? We've got patrolmen, Pennsylvania, stock exchange, boxing, muscled, muscle is M-U-F-L, motionless, transpired, proceedings, Barker, Philadelphia, armor, or I'm sorry, army, athletic, fluttered, tellers, Marcy Kinderman, Partition, Skin Dive, Leaflets. All right. Now I'm going to start this at 200 and work my way to 225. Okay. Here we go. Did the bank teller Marcy Kinderman ever ask you to leave the premises? No. The policeman came inside the bank, and then what happened? Well, about another couple of minutes passed, and then two foot patrolmen were walking up the street, and they passed. As they were passing the bank door, they looked in the bank, and they waved, and then they came in the bank. Who waved, the police outside or the policemen inside? The two policemen that were walking up the street waved. Did you see anyone inside waving back? 
No, I was up at the counter, so that makes me about 50 or so feet to the west of them. What next? I waited for a couple of minutes or so, and then I walked down past the counter to see, you know. I wanted to see what was going on. Then I stationed myself between the bank door and the door of the teller's door. There's a little bit of separation there. There's a distance of maybe about 15 or 20 feet, 15 feet, I would say. Is that bank premises or Pennsylvania Stock Exchange premises? Neither or both? It's actually one whole building. It's all one building. Okay, at this time, with your right hand, did you push some leaflets off the counter by accident? I would say no. I just flicked them with my finger on purpose. Did you push them with your finger? Can you describe to me how you did that? As far as I know, I made a motion with my fingers, flicking them, you know, here like this. May the record indicate that the witness has indicated that he flicked them with the back sides of his fingertips. Is that correct? Yes, I will accept that. That is accepted. Go ahead. Thank you. Now you made this flicking motion in the direction of Ms. Of Ms. Kinderman across the counter. To the best of your recollection, did your hand extend further towards her direction when you made the gesture? Uh-huh. To the best of your recollection, did any of these leaflets come in contact with her person? Well, they fluttered. I believe that I saw some go as far as her person, three or four feet across the counter. Is that correct? Yes. Was Ms. Kinderman seated or standed at, standing at that time? Standing. What was the level of her head in relationship to the top of the partition? She's a fairly tall woman. I would say that her head probably was over a foot above the top of the partition. You indicated she was tall. Can you give me any estimate as to her height, please? I would say she was 5'7 or more. Are you the same height and weight as you were in 2009? I may have been about 10 pounds heavier, but that's just approximate. You appear to be rather well muscled. Do you participate in athletic sports of any kind? Have you ever boxed? I hike and I skydive. I completed my boxing in the army. I, I, I believe you indicated that after you had pushed, or however you wish to describe it, the leaflets in her direction, you handed her the note ordering her to give you the money in her drawer. She made a motion with her arm and the two of you remained there for approximately 30 seconds before someone else came over. Is that correct? Yes. During this one minute, did you have any conversation with Ms. Kinderman? No. The two of you just stood motionless? Yes. You made no conversation with her at all? Not that I can recall, no. Did you make any other physical gestures toward her of any nature? Not that I recall. At that time, did it appear to you that she was going to continue with any transactions involving your note? Well, I really can't say what it appeared like she was going to do. I was waiting to see what she was going to do. Was there any reason why during that 30 seconds that you could not have gone to another window and selected another teller? Any reason at all? There were no restrictions. She was scared and so was I. And then at this time, after the 30 seconds or so had elapsed, the bank manager, Mr. Barker, came over. Is that correct? Yes. And the proceedings transpired as you have explained to us earlier? Yes. You indicated that approximately two or three days after this incident took place, that would be about May 4 or May 5. You were arrested at the main branch of Philadelphia Savings and Loan. Is that right? Yes. After this arrest, did you arrange to have your attorney contact the bank and ask them to drop the charges? Yes, I instructed my attorney to do this, to indicate to the bank that you would like to settle this short of any informal or formal legal proceedings. I indicated that I wanted to talk to someone who was in charge of operations of some kind. That's interesting. How are we doing? All right, we're right at six o'clock. Let me unmute everyone. So everyone should be unmuted. Do you guys have, oh, let's see here. You know, I had this happen earlier where I was speaking and it was coming through. Robert said that somebody has their speakers on there. Um, let's see. Let's see, is that better? Yep, I think that might be Colleen. 
because I think Colleen, you were in there in the class earlier and it was doing that same thing. So we figured it out. So I think you have your speakers on. So when I speak, then it comes through your speakers and then it echoes and then comes back through. So, <laughs> um, all right. Well, do you guys have any questions? Any questions about briefs, phrases, the light board? How do we access the playback? Okay, so as soon as class is over, I release it to Robert and he immediately posts it on the website. So you just go to that web page and you'll see a link and it will, it will say uh, uh, Upper Speeds Live Class and you click on that and it'll have like the dates. So obviously today's the 15th and um, he, he's pretty good about getting it out right away, okay? Great workout. I was sweating. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. I'm so, so happy that you enjoyed it. And just so you know, we will have another high speeds live class on Friday morning at nine o'clock. So if you are anywhere near the 180, I always encourage people to push. Um, even if you know you might be at 60, you may have to drop some words, but that's okay. So I think pushing is just as important as trailing. Love the hodgepodge mixture. Very good. I'm glad you liked it. And I know even though the words are not very difficult, sometimes it's more difficult because you're not expecting what's coming next, you know? Gauge my writing. Hurts in a very good way. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Just so you know, my everything is muted. Huh. Um, I did mute you, Colleen, because I, I, um, figured that, that the echo was coming from your speakers because you were in the class earlier and at the end it was really like, um, it had like an echo to it and it was doing it again. And as soon as I muted you, it stopped. So you'll have to see if your speakers were on, um, maybe, maybe they're on speaker. I don't know. So, um, let me see. Let me unmute you and see if that works. Okay, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing it again. So, it must be Colleen. Must be your speakers. Have them on. Huh. That is interesting. Can you guys hear that? Whatever I say. Yeah. Yeah, it's echoing. Yes. Okay, Nora. I'm glad I'm glad it's me. It's hard to talk because everything I say is coming back through. Okay, let's do this, Colleen. Okay, I just muted Colleen. See, and it stopped. So it's something to do with Colleen's speakers. Huh. Interesting. So maybe ask Robert, Colleen, send Robert an email and see if um, maybe he can give you a tip on that. Because he was telling me some, one of the students had their speaker on and it was um, echoing. That's why everything I was seeing was kind of, you know, echoing back. But um, maybe Robert can give you like a little tip or something. So, all right. Well, if you think of any other questions, um, just send me an email. Does anybody have questions about the light board? Everybody okay with that? Any questions about um, everything from my scoping? Huh, that's interesting. Well, if you think of something, feel free to email me, and I hope that I can see you on Friday morning at 9. If not, feel free to come in, and I encourage you to watch the recorded class. So thank you very much for attending live, and you guys have a great night. You too. Okay, bye. Bye, Nora. Bye, everyone.